Hello everyone, this is Michael and I'm the lead developer for the ShapeDiver Viewer. This is the third video of the tutorial series for the ShapeDiver Viewer API. I linked the playlist with all videos of the tutorial series here if you missed it. In the first video we will discuss the basic setup and in the second video we had a look at parameters. Now in the third video we are going to have a look at exports. For exports we separate between download exports and email exports. Both of these type of exports are defined in Grasshopper and I'll link the documentation to that in the description below. From the viewer side, both exports work almost the same. For the download exports, we only have to make sure to download the file that we receive. In the first part of this video, I'm going to go through the basic usage of the export API object of the viewer. In the second part, we are creating a small UI similar to the parameters UI. Alright, enough talk, let's code. Okay, so we start where we left off in the parameters video. So with the created parameter menu and in this case, a slightly different model, which is linked in the description because this just has more exports and also a delay option, which I'll show you later on what that does. So first of all, how do we get an export from the view API? So there are again three different functions that get export by ID, get export by name and get export by type function. In our case, we use the get export by name function with the image export. So it's pretty easy to request an export. In our case, we just have to call request on the export object. And that's already it. We log now the results to our console to see what we get there. All right, already resolved. And now we can see all of the properties that we have here. Don't worry. We don't need most of them, um, but what we're going to look into is the content because in the content we have a link to the image that we want. So now that we know where this is, we just add some small checks to be sure that this is there. And then with the window open command, we are now downloading that image. This works for all kind of file types. In our case, it's just an image. So once we reload again, hey, we get an image export. And it's this cat picture that we have here as a ground plane. Perfect, so this was our first example of a download export. And now we go to the email export. So once again, with the get export by name function, we get our export API object. And once again, it's exactly the same function. Um, we just call request on this export object. And we log our results to the console. In this case, there's not much else to do because I send an email. So here I can see in the result property, the email has been successfully sent. And I checked that, oh, I got an email. And here's the link to my export, again this image. Okay, now to make things a bit more interesting, we are going to customize our export request. So we are doing this by sending it to a different email and changing the subject. So I have two parameters for that. One is the email parameter where I can specify the email where we're going to send the export to. And one is the email subject parameter where we are specifying what the email subject should be. All right, so we can now supply a parameter object to the request function. So I now create here this email export parameters object, which is a string to string dictionary. So basically a re really basic object. And first of all, I take the ID of the email parameter and now set this to a bit of a different email. Now for the subject, I do almost the same. I basically just change the subject from the default I have set. Now the only thing to do is to supply that object to the request function. Save, it reloads and now It tells me that the email was successfully sent 
and I can check my emails. And now I get an email with a different subject and send to a different email. You can also change the body of the email and lots of different options. I linked what you can do with all of those options in the description below. Um, I just want to show that it's pretty easy to do that. Now, once I remove that email, so it's, there's not an email to send it to, I get something else in the result that no recipient email address has been specified, which is correct. So here, basically, you can do some error checking in that case. And regarding error checking, here is where it gets interesting. I now force an error by specifying a delay that takes longer than the computation time that is set for my account. So I do this with a small script inside of my Grasshopper file, um, just here for testing this so I can show you how errors look on export. I have here this delay parameter, which directly affects the export, and it basically just waits for the specified number of seconds. So here, once again, I specify an object. And in this object, we are now going to add the delay parameter with a value of over 30 seconds because 30 seconds is my computation limit. And now we are trying to request an export with that. So once again, we are adding the object to the request command and let's see what we are getting here. Okay, so I skipped forward here because we don't want to wait 30 seconds in this video. So 30 seconds later, I get this export. And now we can see, oh, the status collect and status computation have timer in there. And there's a message property, which is telling us that it took too long, longer than 30 seconds. So now when this changes to 15 seconds, I now skip again the 15 seconds that I waited. And now I can see, okay, it succeeded and I get something in my content and I can check that it should be a text with the number of seconds that I waited. And this is correct. All right, so we are now creating a little export UI. So there's not much needed than buttons in this case. So if you have seen the parameter video, a lot of this will be familiar to you because the structure of the parameters and the exports is very similar. So once again, we are getting our diff that we have specified in the index.html file. And once again, we order the exports here. So we did that for parameters exactly the same way. Now we do it for exports. Similarly to the parameters, also the exports have a order property that can be adjusted via our platform. So we are ordering now the exports by this order property. We have to check if it's defined. If it's undefined, I set it to infinity so that these exports will go to the end. All right, so now that we have ordered our exports, we can loop through them. And the first thing we are going to do is check if we want to hide the export. And exactly the same as for the parameters, there is the hidden property for exports. So we are now checking for each export if it should be hidden. If that is the case, we just skip this export object. And now, it gets pretty easy because for exports, we can do the same thing for all of them. So we just create one element for all export types. So we create a new function and call it create export element. So add a little typo here. And in this case, we want to create first of all a diff where we can add all of those input objects. So we create a small 
helper function for that. In this case, we can just copy paste that from the parameters because for the parameters we did exactly the same. Normally you would probably structure this a bit differently, but since this is a tutorial series, I'm just going to copy paste this now. So we are going to the parameters file and are just copy pasting this where we create a new div and a label with the either display name or name of the export. So here I change all of the occurrences of parameter with export and that already did the trick in this case. So if the display name is defined, we use it. If not, we use the name of the export. The display name can be adjusted on the platform. So if you want to choose a different name, you can set it there. Okay, now we have created a label and a div. Let's add a button now. For exports, we only need to trigger the request function. So a button is enough here. You could use something else, but a button just makes sense. We now add some text to the button. Again, either the display name or the name, if the display name is not specified. And in this case, I noticed that the label is probably a bit overkill, as you will see in a second. Okay, now let's have a look how this looks like. Ah, and perfect. We get all four exports already in our menu. Now these buttons don't do anything yet. So we have to add an on click event listener. So whenever the button is clicked, this is executed. Now here comes a small type separation between that download export and the email export. So for both, we can just request the export. So we're starting off with the email export. In this case, there's not much to do. We are here just logging the result of the export object. Just for us as an information if this succeeded or not. So we can try this out now. Request an email export and see. Okay, it was successfully sent. Perfect. Now for the download export. Here we want to actually download the file. So in this case, we have to do some safety checks if the content exists and if the first element of the content exists, so we can download that element. We do this again via the window.open command. And that's already it here. Simple as that. We can now try this out with our export. We have this image export again. We see that works. Now the lay export, which tells us that the lay number in this case is zero by default. Perfect. And an OBJ export as well. So we can look that up in the Windows viewer. And we are done for today. In this video, I showed you how you can request exports via the viewer API. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll focus on outputs. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy coding and see you next time.